Hi, my name's Steve. Welcome to another Mind Bomb training video. Um, today's subject is um, talking about uh, websites and how to make the, the most of uh, my new business website or first business uh, website maybe. Um, if you're in the situation, you've been thinking about it for a while and you actually want to make that leap and um, just uh, get started, get your um, web presence uh, felt, um, then yeah, this is a video for you. I hope I can um, add a bit of advice <laughs> amongst everything else um, um, hopefully a bit of unbiased advice um, about the best place to start and um, how you can develop that um, web presence and make sure that it's part of a, a plan for the overall business. So as a starting point I'm just um, making the assumption that um, you're not going to be a, a tech business and that um, the uh, website and tech development isn't really at the heart of what you do. If it is, then obviously you don't need this video, you'll know exactly what you're trying to do. And um, really, this, this video really is aimed at the butchers, bakers and candlestick makers, all the other trades um, type of businesses um, that really aren't necessarily going to be doing this as a, a full-time thing. It's not going to be um, their own um, website development. It's really a matter of just trying to help people um, with other day jobs, if you like, other parts of the um, the business to focus on to work out what's best for them and work out whether they actually need to do their own website, develop it themselves or uh, maybe get a, a third party um, web developer involved and um, that's what I just want to outline today, the, the thought process, um, the stages that you need to go through to um, essentially get yourself online, get your web presence felt and um, uh, yeah, make the, the next step for the business. So the first place to start is do you really need a, a website? and um, there's so many other options these days. Once upon a time, if you wanted to be online, then really you had to have your own web presence and um, put a lot of effort into that. But now it depends on your type of business. It may well be that if you're a, um, a, a design-led business, uh, for instance, if you do lots of creative work, then maybe um, something like Instagram um, would be better. So you can present all your work on Instagram. Equally, um, if you're selling, if you're looking for a sales platform, then Obviously, there's places like Amazon and eBay, but also um, the likes of Etsy, um, Depop if it's clothes related. Um, there's obviously other channels now that have developed that um, they already have the customers there. And you don't then need to worry about creating e-commerce solutions on your own website. Um, maybe those are the channels to go for and uh, put the time and effort into developing those where the customers are. You know, if, they're, if you, you don't have to worry about bringing customers to your website if you're going to basically have an Etsy shop and um, you've already got those customers in the right place. If they're your type of customers, then um, that's really where you need to be putting the effort. The second option to consider is um, whether you should actually go down the route of the, the DIY uh, sort of template based websites. And um, there's lots of them around now. And the, <laughs> the advertising can be very tempting. It makes it sound so easy to um, be able to effectively create your template website within a, uh, a matter of a lunchtime or a coffee break um, that you've effectively um, put together a few, um, a few different images and put your own typeface to it and uh, you know, put it into your own colours and that's it, you've got a website. It's not actually as easy as that. I think if you're um, creating something like that, you've got to be very careful that it doesn't fall into the trap of um, not looking like a finished, polished product. Uh, because remember, this is the shop front. You know, whatever your uh, business is, this is where the customers um, could potentially be finding you and um, looking in your shop window effectively. So <laughs> if it looks like something that's uh, a lock up under the railway arches um, instead of being a, a polished gleaming spire of an office or um, you know a really attractive um, shop window then um, you've got to consider that think about how it's going to appear when people find it um, and then being found is the other issue with that if you're just creating a template website it's very unlikely that um, 
you're going to have any input into the um, searchability or SEO, the search engine optimization. Um, there's very little that you can really do to make sure that you're um, uh, hitting the, 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 the ranks of the um, searches uh, when people are looking for your kind of business. So it can be um, attractive, especially if you've got some experience. Maybe if you've done it before, then uh, fine, that might be a route to go down. But um, don't think that it's an easy option. I think there's a, a lot that you need to put into it to, um, to consider. Um, so uh, yes, it's a potential, um, but it's not something that um, I would heartily recommend for um, anyone that wants to have a, um, a professional, properly uh, sorted um, website and appearance. I think the other problem with the, uh, the template websites is that um, uh, you've got to consider whether technically you have the ability to add things like um, an online shop. Can you actually add that presence? And um, similarly, if, you're, if your business relies on um, databases or um, maybe more complicated information in the background, then can you really add that into a, a, a basic template website um, without becoming very embroiled and um, finding it um, uh, very much an uphill battle to do yourself. So I think you've got to consider what the structure is that you need, all the key features and whether that is really uh, doable on a template website. Um, if you just want a presence and it's something to say where you are and show a few of your products, then fine. But uh, as soon as you get into any technical sort of interoperability, um, then I think it can be more of a, a problem with the, um, the template websites. Something else to consider, the third thing I would consider is um, if the, whether the website is really for getting more sales online, um, is it something that you want to actually develop so that you can increase the sales? Is that really a driver for it? And um, if so, as I say, the, the logic may well be that those sales are already available to you on other channels, on other platforms. Yes, you have to pay a commission if you want to list your uh, product on um, Amazon or eBay. Um, but then again, they've done all the hard work for you. There's no um, issues with how you're doing the, um, the e-commerce side of things and the stock control and everything else. Then um, that's all done for you. So it may well be um, that if it's all about the, the sales, but really you concentrate on promoting a particular channel and perhaps use social media or SEO um, expertise to actually funnel the, the customers to your room, eBay shop or Etsy shop or wherever else it may be. So yeah, just think about whether that is the, the key driver for um, um, creating a website. Um, it may be a long-term plan that you actually want to develop your own sales on the um, on the website and um, you can actually use one of the others to um, get customers initially and um, you know you can use marketing tricks then to to bring them to your own website as well so I think there's a lot to be considered especially if you're going to um, uh, look to be selling from the website uh, the fourth point I would raise is um, if you're going to go with a third-party developer so you, you want to um, look around and see who can create you a custom website if you actually want to outsource the, the work for that. Um, I think this is probably a, a good idea these days. There's not, um, <laughs> going back a number of years, then it was going to be an expensive process. Uh, but now you can find um, web developers and uh, website designers that really can um, start from uh, a few hundred pounds, going right the way through to tens of thousands of pounds to create the website. So you've got to work with the right people to make sure that um, you know what their, their um, capable of and also going to be able to deliver on your specification. The more input that you can have at the start to that process, um, you've got to be able to tell people exactly what you want out of the website and go to them with um, examples that you like, other websites that you've seen, um, the types of pages that you're going to need. If you can map out the structure and work out, um, just draw it all out, what the pages should look like um, and then go from one page to the other in terms of the navigation and how you expect people to be able to do that. The more of that work that you can do, um, then the, the easier the relationship's going to be with the, the web developer and um, hopefully the, the you know, more quicker, the, the, the 
they can actually do that work more quickly than um, uh, it should actually cost less than um, having some open-ended discussion and um, not being able to get the structure right at the end of it. So yeah, if you can um, cer certainly at the start work exactly work out exactly which pages you need and um, how the, the customer should actually be able to get through the website, then um, that's going to help any discussion with the web developer. The other thing to consider with the, the third party is whether you should actually have professional photography done. Um, most people nowadays, if they're doing a template website, obviously use their own, uh, their own camera, their own smartphone to uh, do the, the photographs. But things like um, professional photography and um, copywriting for that matter, it's someone to put your words into a, um, <laughs> yeah, a very much more readable text. Um, all of that stuff is very, very useful and um, shouldn't really cost a fortune nowadays, but will make the, the end result much more polished and um, yeah, much more like that gleaming spire of a, um, a website that um, people hopefully will find very attractive and um, yeah, very reassuring when they actually find it. Just one other point about the images, it can be really useful if you can provide as many of those images to the, the web developers um, because I have seen websites where they go away and they'll um, effectively just get stock images uh, that don't mean anything for your particular business. It might look like an image of something that you're actually selling um, or that you're servicing or whatever. Uh, but the, the truth is, it's not yours. So it, it can definitely help if you get the, um, the specific images sorted out before uh, going to the web developer and uh, talking about what the, the website will look like. So I'd suggest doing that as a, a starting point and plenty of images. It's the old thing about um, a picture conveying a thousand words. So make sure that you've got plenty of images of what you do. Maybe it's the premises, maybe it's the type of product, um, maybe it's the service. Then all of those things just get lots more than you actually anticipate using. Um, and then basically you can pick from them and choose the best. So in summary, <laughs> you might not be surprised that my uh, preferred option is one of these things that I would actually like to outsource. I would prefer to go to a, a third party uh, web developer um, and basically put off that moment. If I was in the early stages of my business, then I might just uh, go with social media, make sure that you're um, very present on the social media channels. Um, and like I say, use the online channels such as eBay, Amazon, Etsy, um, those kind of people for the, the, the actual sales element of what you're doing. Um, so yeah, as I say, put off to the last minute, make sure you've got the budget. When you've got the budget, then look at getting a, a third party developer involved. Um, a, it'll be a lot easier, should be a, a lot easier uh, process for yourself. And B, you'll come out of it with a much more polished and finished product. Yeah, once you've got your own domain, then um, obviously you want to make that as uh, polished and um, as attractive as possible. And um, yeah, the way to do it is to use people that have actually been through that process before. So um, that's what I would recommend. And don't forget that you've actually got to compete nowadays with everybody. So um, it's not just a, a range of small, similar businesses that are actually competing for your customers. You've got to be out there competing with the supermarkets, with the likes of Amazon and so on, um, in terms of ease of use and access, as I say, searchability, all of those kind of things. So um, yeah, make sure that you're um, doing the, the very best job that you can. And um, that really needs some professional input. I hope that this, this video has been useful. <laughs> I hope it eases that headache of wondering what to do about the website and where on earth to start. And um, yeah, if you've enjoyed watching it, thank you very much for watching. And um, I hope to see you next time. Thank you.